Vicki Beeching, the British singer who's one of the biggest stars of America's Christian rock scene, says she's gay. It goes against everything her faith had instructed. She says she lived in shame and isolation. She struggled with her sexuality since the age of 13. But in the end, she couldn't carry on living a lie. It could have a devastating impact on her career in a community that thinks that homosexuality is a sin which can be cured. Well, in a moment, we'll speak to her live. But first, in her own words, she explains why she's determined to be part of change within the church itself. Vicky Beeching. say it's something I've thought about every single day since the age of 13 and now I'm 35 which is pretty crazy to think about just how much of a life has been spent pondering that but um, I think for me it was it was so difficult because I love the church one of the classic stories you usually use to talk about it is um, one of the Old Testament stories about two cities called Sodom and Gomorrah where um, God kind of rained down fire and judged these cities. And I do remember those things were taught in Sunday school with quite graphic pictures, you know, that, that really was quite harrowing. Um, and I suppose those kind of things don't really leave you as you become a teenager. You think back to those Sunday school memories and think, gosh, you know, this is the thing they talked about at Sunday school. This is scary. I must be a really bad person. Isaiah 46 verses 3 and 4 Even when you are old, I will be the same. Even when your hair has turned grey, I will take care of you. I've always kept a diary since I was really little and I've noticed looking back at my diaries that they all had private, keep out, top secret written on them. It's quite painful actually to, um, to see the things I was struggling with and just how fractured I was and, and the constant apologies I would make to God. When I was 13, I was just beside myself, sobbing into my bedroom carpet, saying to God, you know, you've got to take my life away. I can't actually handle this. Like, I can't be a Christian and gay. These things don't work in my family, in my universe, in my world. Uh, at one point when I was um, 15 or 16, I was at a conference and they said people should come forwards if they were struggling with something that they couldn't cope with, and they wanted to be free from. And so I, I went forwards at this meeting and had people lay hands on me and pray very loudly and shout and tell the devil to, you know, get out. And that, I think, can really fracture you as a teenager, sort of psychologically fracture you and make you think, actually, the feelings I'm having aren't my feelings. They're demonic feelings or the devil's feelings inside me. The place I felt most happy, the place I felt most at home, was actually on an aeroplane, 30,000 feet up. Um, so I actually felt a lot of peace when I was flying because I felt like we were all in between. And uh, in between was easy. But when I landed, there was there was never really a sense of home. I really turned to, I think, trying to be the perfect student and the perfect Christian to try and make up for it. Made sure I got straight A's, made sure I got into Oxford. After Oxford, I got signed to EMI, which required a move to Nashville. Please greet Vicky Beeching. I will sing with all my heart until you love. So my time in America was largely spent in the Bible Belt. Which, as you can imagine, is an incredibly conservative culture. I was imagining when I moved to America, it would be slightly more open-minded, and it actually felt like really going back in time. So suddenly I found myself in an environment that was even less conducive to me coming to terms with uh, my sexuality, and there were billboards everywhere on, on the highways, you know, offering conversion therapy, reparative therapy to fix people. I am afraid because my livelihood has been based on um, working within that conservative Christian culture. My life has been about writing these songs that the church sings. Um, they pay royalties when they sing them and that pays my rent and puts food on the table. So um, once I've spoken out about this, I doubt very much whether those churches will sing those songs. If one of those teenagers could just see more people standing up and saying, actually, it's OK. You know, the Bible, which I love and I, I've studied in depth, you know, it doesn't actually say what we think it says about human sexuality. We've got a lot of it wrong. And I just hope there can be a message of hope to those young people 
to, um, to be who they are, to know that that's okay and that God loves them exactly the way they are. I'm joined in the studio now by Vicky Beeching herself and from Springfield, Massachusetts by the evangelical pastor Scott Lively, a man fiercely critical of homosexuality in the past and who advised the Ugandan government on their recent anti-homosexuality bill. But first to you, Vicky. I mean, there are so many whys watching your film. Why didn't you turn against the church? Why did you live in Nashville, the buckle of the Bible Belt, for eight years? And why have you spoken out now? It does probably seem like, <laughs> seems like quite a mystery to most people, I guess. Yeah. A lot of people would think that actually coming out as a gay person is almost quite blasé in this day and age. But um, I think I wanted to tell my story just to remind people that there are still pockets of the world, like um, religion and I think also places like sport, where it still is a really big deal to speak out about sexuality and uh, it comes with massive repercussions. And just tell us a little bit about these repercussions. I think um, partially it's about wondering if your community is going to crumble if people are going to stop phoning, kind of treat you like uh, you know, you've become awkward because there's something about you that they don't agree with and they don't know how to address. And then also for me as someone who works in Christian ministry and has um, had a long career in Christian music, I mean, all of those people uh, t tend towards the conservative view. So it just makes me feel like I probably need to find a new livelihood. And it must have been really strange for you to be in a place like Nashville, Tennessee, to, to give a concert in front of a huge audience of people who loved you and applauded you, and lots of adulation. At the same time, you knew that if you had come out to them in public on that stage, they would have had a rather yeah. different opinion. I think that was the thing that really crushed me in the end, that sense that what if people knew? And it wasn't something I was living out, it wasn't something I was acting on, it was just something I knew uh, that was true about myself. And uh, it was just something I thought about every single day. And even in my close friendships, I wondered that. I felt this sort of isolation had grown around me because with all of these close Christian friends, I thought, well, what if they knew that this is really the way that I'm wired, who I am inside? would they still be my friends? So it felt like my whole world really was kind of built on quite thin ice. And how supportive has your family been in all this? They've been great. I talked to my parents at Easter and... Um, this Easter? Yeah, and they've been really, really um, loving and wonderful. In terms of um, believing what the Bible says, they would take a more traditional line, but at the same time as not agreeing with um, my theology, they love me unconditionally. And I think that's, um, to me, that's a great model, that you don't have to agree with somebody entirely to be able to love them. So this has not diminished your faith in any way? No, I think a lot of people have wondered why I didn't leave the church, but mm. actually uh, my faith is stronger than it's ever been. I love the church. I want to be part of the change within that. I don't think the solution is to walk away. I think the solution is to stay in the middle of it and try mm. and bring positive hope. Well, let's turn to Scott Lively in Massachusetts. Uh, Reverend Lively, you heard uh, Vicky Beeching there. I mean, do you have any sympathy for her views? Has it changed your views towards homosexuality at all? Well, I have a lot of sympathy toward Vicky herself. Uh, my sister was a lesbian. And uh, in fact, I was the person that she came out to as a teenager. Uh, and I was the person that she turned to later uh, when lesbianism had almost destroyed her. And she became a Christian and overcame lesbianism. And uh, so I have a lot of uh, sympathy for people who struggle uh, with the challenge that Vicky is facing. And I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that she has given in to the lie that, uh, that she is a homosexual, and uh, instead of continuing to try to overcome right. the challenge okay. that is in her life. All, the, the, all of us have challenges. Vicky, let's, uh, let's hear your response to that. Excuse me for interrupting you. Let's hear your response. You're living a lie, according to you. You've yeah, given into a lie. That is very much what I've been raised to believe, and I think psychologically that's actually very damaging for people because it makes you feel like you're fighting against yourself. And I think um, many conservative Christians, maybe Scott too, would agree that it's actually a kind of demonic thing. So you begin to look within yourself thinking, actually, these feelings are not only bad, but I'm being controlled by by the devil. I mean, that's what I was told in yeah. Nashville. So I think actually it's about coming to terms with who you are and realizing we need to accept um, our sexual orientation as a God-given gift rather than making it sound like it's a battle between who you're made to be and who you are. Reverend Lively, is Vicky being controlled by the devil? Well, uh, all of us struggle with uh, various different types of temptations. It's part of human life. Uh, Christians uh, face these same temptations. There's no, no difference between the challenges that we have or anyone else in the world has. But we are called to rise above the temptations and to follow the, the guidance of God. Uh, he gave very, very clear, explicit instructions about sexuality. He established the one flesh paradigm in Genesis 127 and, and 224 that uh, therefore shall a man leave his family and cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. 
and all sexual activity outside of that covenant that he's established for us to have between one man and one woman is illicit mm. and wrong. And just because you have temptations, strong temptations, mm. to go outside of that bond, uh, that doesn't legitimize them. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a married man. I've been married for 33 years. Uh, but being a man, I'm attracted to women other than my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've never given into those it's temptations. It's a very different situation, though. Let Vicky me just ask you one question. Else struggling with homosexuality so to if, you're, if you're a straight person, uh -huh. and people use this argument on me a lot, um, at least today, um, and in when I've argued this before just as a theologian, um, if you're a straight person and you say, actually, it's wrong for me as a Christian to have sex outside of marriage, so I'm going to commit to one person of the same sex, that actually gives you the hope of having a life partner, of finding one person and committing to them. But if you're saying, um, that a Christian gay person actually can't have sex outside of that heterosexual paradigm at all. Well, it's a it false means there's premise, no hope Vicky. for them to have a partner. It's a, f it's a false premise. There's no such thing as a gay person. So you it's do a, not think that people a, are born gay? It's an identity you adopt. So how come I can't change Absolutely the way I not. feel? Absolutely not. I Absolutely believe God not. has made me the way that he's made me. It's taken well, me 35 years to come to terms with that. And I believe it's actually part of my God-wired identity. Vicky. God has the power to, to help you to overcome your homosexual inclinations. Well, First that kind Corinthians of teaching has been chapter so six, damaging to me, 11. and it damages so many people. I think it's, uh, it's one well, of those things when, that can really the, psychologically scar you people. You have, Vicki, well, Vicki, well, you're, you keep referring to, to psychology rather than to spirituality. I think that's your problem. You have adopted the thinking of the world including the idea like science, that, you mean. Uh, that being criticized so damages science you. is not God ordained. Well, God didn't no, give us a brain and true, intellect. True, true, true science, no, true science and, uh, and uh, biblical theology are perfectly consistent. Uh, okay. So psychology for you does not reflect God's and, intellect and in us as humans. Because I would say that actually psychology is extremely... What, I, what I'm saying um, is... Is it part of what it means to be human is to have a brain and to be intelligent and God gave us that ability. So I think that the studies into sexuality don't are very much important. Don't you care what God thinks, Vicky? I do, and that is actually why I'm taking this step Vicky, today so that young people thinks? don't have to listen to the kind of teaching that you peddle because it damages. Can I can I just uh, butt in very quickly well, and ask you a question, Reverend Lively? Mm -hmm. You helped to yeah. you helped the Ugandan government mm -hmm. draft an anti-homosexuality law that includes the death penalty. No, I just, didn't. But no, I didn't. What, what does does I Vicky didn't. deserve some I've sort of punishment? I've been on your show talking about that laws? before. That's a lie. It's a uh, lie. But that, that's a lie. I'm not going to. I'm not going to respond to it. I, my my position is the is the biblical one that God created all human beings. There are many every biblical single person on this planet. Though, I think that, that has either, to be acknowledged male, at least on this program. I'm doing a PhD in theology. There are many ways you no, can read are, the Bible. I love are, the Bible with all my heart. It's I, my favorite book. I have, a, I, have a, mm -hmm. I have a THD myself, and Good. I also have a doctor of law. And we can agree to disagree on the fact that those texts can be read in different out. ways. There are no, different there ways. Are some for example, that there are different ways in the scripture. There are different ways to read me, the scriptures please, on women. For example, sentence. we agree okay. to disagree on that. Let me finish my sentence, please. Let me ask you one last. Let, let me you ask had, you one had, last you question. You had the whole setup piece, and you've had okay. you've had but plenty of time to talk. Let me let me Reverend, let me answer the question. Reverend Lively, you've both the, had an ample opportunity. Let me ask you one final question, Reverend Lively. Have you ever had any homosexual thoughts yourself? No, I, fortunately for me, I have never uh, experienced same-sex attraction, but I understand people that have, I, I was an alcoholic and a drug addict, that was my uh, challenge. I had temptations uh, to indulge in, in substances of various kinds, and uh, by the grace of God, I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, mm. and I was healed and delivered from that, just as many okay. of my friends have been uh, whose temptation was homosexuality. I have many ex-gay friends, okay. and Vicki, you do not need to succumb to the flesh. You can overcome okay. that. First Corinthians chapter well, 6, I think the 9 through okay, no, 11, gonna, gotcha, everyone have should to leave read that, that we've, we've run out of time. Fascinating stuff watching you both, listening to you both. Thank you very much, Reverend. Thank you very much, Vicky Beeching.